I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about the embryo cannot fall out and other very important post-embryo transfer instructions. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build their families and doing embryo transfers for over 15 years. And I want to help you with your post embryo transfer instructions. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through what I tell my patients, some of the evidence surrounding post embryo transfer do's and don'ts. I want you to, of course, go over all this information with your doctor and your medical team, but I'm sharing with you um, what I have learned through the years and what I tell my own patients. So on the day of the embryo transfer, it is such an important day. I have gone over preparing for the embryo transfer and what to expect on that day in great detail in some other videos. This video is really talking about after the embryo transfer, what you should and shouldn't do. So the embryo cannot fall out. I cannot emphasize that enough. The embryo is amazing. It is so tiny and people are just so nervous that after the embryo transfer that it, when they sit up or they go to the bathroom or they walk around, it's just going to fall out and it will not. I had this wonderful professor and instructor during my fellowship at Stanford, um, Dr. Amin Milky, who explained to me one day and used a food analogy and it is just stuck with me, no pun intended that imagine that the uterine walls, so we think of the uterine cavity as like an open cavity and the embryo kind of bouncing around like a little ping pong ball, but it is, that's not how it works. The uterine walls kind of stick together and there is space in here, but it's a potential space. And so he described the two walls of the uterus kind of like bagels and the lining of the uterus, like where the embryo goes, like cream cheese, and that we are placing a raisin or the embryo in the middle of the cream cheese. And so that when someone stands up, that embryo or that raisin cannot fall out of the cream cheese. It's not like it's a little, you know, ping pong ball gonna fall out. It just, it doesn't happen. And I know that that's silly and it's funny to use food analogies, but it really worked for me. And I hope that that works for you. So after the embryo transfer, I talk to patients, I say, listen, the embryo cannot fall out. You cannot do anything wrong. I know how precious this is to you. I know how hard you work to be here this day, but man, there is a lot of misinformation on Dr. Google. And so watch out for clickbait and these articles that say like, if you do this one thing, then you'll definitely be pregnant. Or if you do this one thing, you'll definitely will not be pregnant because that is just not true. But when you have an embryo transfer, it's like 10 days before you could even have a positive pregnancy test. Um, and there's a little variation with that, of course, but it's definitely before a positive pregnancy test. And when people are getting pregnant naturally, they're not changing their activities before they have a positive pregnancy test and people can still get pregnant. Of course you want to do everything right. Of course, this is incredibly precious and it, it is different because you do know that you have an embryo. You do know that you are so excited to get pregnant and um, either start or complete your family. And so I, I really understand the desire to want to do everything right. I am not only an IVF doctor, but I did IVF myself. I have been a patient and I have been through that mental gymnastics of, oh my God, I just bent down and picked something up. Did I just ruin the embryo transfer? Or I twisted around too hard or should I go for a walk or should I not go for a walk? Like we all do that. That's human. It's okay. Um, it's okay to ask questions of your clinic. It's okay to have these worries, but I really, I just want you to realize that um, you can't do anything wrong and just pamper yourself, take good care of yourself, but just realize that the embryo is going to implant um, and do what it needs to do. Um, and we, we want to take care of ourselves. We want to make good choices, but don't carry around this tremendous guilt that you did something wrong if you have a negative pregnancy test. Okay. So right after the transfer, I chat with people a little bit and I explain the embryo cannot fall out. When you sit up, it can't fall out. When you get up to go to the bathroom, it can't fall out. I tell my patients, you're welcome to rest here for a few minutes and just kind of reflect on how amazing it is that you got to this incredible goal, this huge hurdle in your fertility journey. Um, but you don't have to lie here for 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Um, when I first started doing transfers, um, we used to have people lie for 20 or 
or 30 minutes after the transfer with a full bladder. You know, you have to have a full bladder to help with visualization and positioning of the uterus to optimize the transfer. Um, we used to give people bed pants afterwards so that they didn't get up. Oh my gosh. I just, I can't believe that we did that, but you know, we were just trying and we're doing the best we can. There's a wonderful study from 2013, a randomized control trial where half of the patients were asked to get up right away after the procedure, go to the bathroom and other patients were asked to, to stay lying down for 10 minutes after the transfer and they compared pregnancy rates. Um, and the people who got up right away had a higher pregnancy rate. So if you want to relax, that is okay, but you should not feel that you have to be uncomfortable and waiting and with a full bladder and worried about standing up too soon because it does not impact your success. Another wonderful um, study, and I talked to my patients about this too, is humor is wonderful for an embryo transfer. So humor really does improve success rates with an embryo transfer. So there was a fantastic study out of Israel in 2011, where half of the patients were entertained with humorous clowns after their embryo transfer. Why did I not think of the study? How great is that? I mean, you know, some people don't like clowns, but these guys were comedians. They came in and they made people ha laugh after their embryo transfer. And the other half of the patients didn't get visited by the clown, which is definitely like the standard. <laughs> we don't usually have clowns in embryo transfer rooms. And the people who were laughed at their embryo transfer had a higher success rate. And so I think that's great. And so you're probably not going to be able to have a clown at the time of your embryo transfer, but you can definitely choose entertaining and fun and lighthearted um, shows and movies on the night of your embryo transfer and just laugh away and enjoy because that will improve your success rates. So to recap on the day of the transfer, you don't have to lie down flat afterwards. Of course, talk to your medical team if they have different recommendations, but the evidence shows you can get up right away and go to the bathroom and think of of humor and just laughing on the day of your transfer can improve your success rates. How great is that? Um, there are some rumors out there about things to do after your transfer to improve success rates. Yes, I have heard of the McDonald's French fries. I have no idea where this started. Um, I think of it as maybe it's just kind of a fun treat and pampering yourself. I will definitely say that people who are doing fresh embryo transfers, you know, a few days after their um, egg retrieval, if they're suffering from um, bloating and ovarian and hyperstimulation syndrome, that salt is really good to decrease the bloating and to improve recovery. So maybe that's where eating the McDonald's french fries came from. If you know where this started, please comment in this video because I want to know where this started because I think that is interesting. And so many of my patients eat um, and it's McDonald's French fries. I don't know why, but it's definitely McDonald's French fries. And the other thing is pineapple. So, so many people will eat pineapple after their embryo transfer to improve implantation rates. Okay. So did you know that pineapple was a symbol for the fertility community? Yes. That's why I'm obsessed with pineapples. Oh, I happen to not be wearing my pineapple, but I often will wear my little pineapple necklace. I have pineapples literally all over my office. It is a symbol of the fertility community. Part of it is just, you know, a symbol of welcoming and hope and, um, and beauty, but also eating pineapple core that is heavy in bromelain supposedly will improve the chances of implantation. Bromelain is an anti-inflammatory and it's heavily found in the core of pineapples, not the yummy yellow part of pineapple, but the actual like grainy kind of core. Studies have not shown that eating pineapple core or eating McDonald's French fries on the day of your embryo transfer improves success rates. But by all means, it seems like something that if you enjoy it, go for it. And the weight for your embryo transfer is excruciating. So what can you do and can't you do? Um, patients ask us this all the time. Um, I think you just have to use your good judgment and just ask your medical team for questions that you have. I think exercise is important and moving your body is important, but you might just not want to push yourself really hard. You don't want to be training for something in the two week wait before your pregnancy test, but movement is important. Walking sort of low impact exercise, fertility, yoga, all these things are so wonderful. Nutrition is important. Um, once you have an embryo transfer, people talk about sort of acting like you're pregnant. So really decreasing your caffeine intake. If you drink more than 250 milligrams of caffeine a day, sometimes it's been associated with a slightly higher risk of first trimester miscarriage. You can think about 
not eating foods that have a high bacteria content. Um, so like sushi, soft cheeses, deli meats. The way I explain this to patients is that your immune system really changes in pregnancy. And it's, it's a lot of it is from progesterone. Progesterone is an immune modulator and really shifts our immune system to a more receptive state. And you just are not able to fight off infections and bacteria as well as when you are not pregnant or you do not have all of this progesterone progesterone on board. And so it's really just to protect you from foodborne illnesses and GI upset, having you avoid these high bacteria content foods when you could potentially be pregnant. I have a whole nother video on the two week wait, you know, um, that time between embryo transfer or um, intrauterine insemination or ovulation and knowing whether you're pregnant or not. This is a really difficult time. Um, if you're leading up to a transfer, you have had a lot of contact with the clinic. You have had appointments, you've had blood tests, you've um, connected with your nurse. And then after the transfer, you're kind of just waiting. It's really common to overanalyze everything that happens in this time frame. So a little cramp, a little spotting, you know, a little bit of breast tenderness, you think to yourself, does this mean I'm pregnant? Or if you don't have any symptoms, does this mean I'm not pregnant? And it'll just drive you crazy. And I have been in the two week wait many times. I've had embryo transfers too. And all of these feelings are really normal and valid. Um, and it's hard because some people will have symptoms and they'll be pregnant and they'll say, oh, so that spotting and the two week wait, that must've been implantation bleeding. Other people won't have any symptoms at all. They don't feel pregnant and they have a positive pregnancy test. So just realize that every person, every attempt every cycle is different and unique and um, you can't always know before that pregnancy test whether you are pregnant or not based on symptoms just be really kind to yourself in that two-week wait think about distractions think about um, things that bring you joy make sure that you continue to follow your instructions and continue taking medication after an embryo transfer Typically you're taking progesterone. You might be taking estrogen as well. There could be other things that your team is recommending. So make sure to follow directions. So if you are planning for your embryo transfer soon, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope it provided reassurance. Like this video if it was helpful. Comment with questions that you have or other topics that you'd like me to cover. Subscribe to this channel so you can continue learning. There's other resources for embryo transfer on my website, drlaurashaheen.com. Um, more videos here on YouTube, on the IVF process and other aspects of the embryo transfer. I am here to help and educate. So thank you for being here and stick around for more learning.